I'm an academic at the University of Sheffield where I teach animal behaviour and the history and philosophy of science. I also do research mainly on the reproductive biology of birds and over the years I've been incredibly lucky to travel across the world studying different bird species. But the species I keep coming back to is the common guillemot which I studied for my PhD uh, on Scomer Island off the coast of Wales in the 1970s. And one particular incident from my PhD sticks very firmly in my mind which is I built a hide very close to a group of guillemots so close in fact I was almost part of the colony and while I was watching these birds one day the bird right in front of me stood up off its egg and started to give its greeting call. I was rather surprised at this because normally that greeting call is only given when the bird's with its partner. And I looked out to see and there amongst the myriad of birds that were flying backwards and forwards along the coast I saw one bird a long way away flying directly towards the colony and to my absolute amazement it landed beside this particular guillemot that was giving the greeting call. And what that told me was that this bird had seen its partner and recognised it at about 500 metres distance, whereas to me, even at half a metre distance, all guillemots looked the same. To some extent, I probably shouldn't have been too surprised at the guillemot's remarkable sense of vision, um, because eagles and falcons are renowned for having excellent vision, but somehow guillemot seems a bit more pedestrian, so it still came as a surprise. So in bird sense, I've discussed some of these different senses that birds have and I'm now just going to give you a few examples of some of the amazing um, sensory abilities that birds have. One of my favourites is the great grey owl. This is a bird of the northern forest, northern tundra and this bird can hunt entirely by hearing. It's a daytime predator and it has reasonably good vision but its hunting is predominantly by hearing and what it can do is it can pinpoint the location of mice and voles under the snow and then plunge through the snow and catch them with great accuracy. And it does this, first of all, by having a huge facial disc that helps to concentrate the sound towards the ears and by having very large ears. You can't see the ears because they're hidden by the feathers. And the most remarkable thing is that their ears are very asymmetrically positioned on the owl's head. One is down here and the other one is up here. And what that does is to maximise the distance between the two ears, which in turn maximises the time interval between sound reaching the two ears. And by that means, the owl can pinpoint a source of sound with great precision. And that's the way it hunts these mice and voles under the snow. Unlike owls, which are also nocturnal and have large eyes, the kiwi is basically given up on vision and instead uses a strong sense of smell and a sense of touch to find its way around and to find its prey. If you look at a kiwi's brain, that region of the brain that's responsible for detecting and processing smells, called the olfactory bulb, is bigger in a kiwi than in any other bird. In fact, the kiwi's sense of smell is so good, uh, it can smell an earthworm through 15 centimetres of soil. So when it's probing around looking for food, it's not probing around at random, it's already smelt the location of the worm and will find it in that way. The final example of senses um, is an emotional sense, and this is very controversial because we know so little about it. But one of the things I've constantly been struck by with my guillemots is that they, the males and females spend the winter apart and after six or seven months apart they both return to the colony in the spring and find each other. And when they do that, their greeting ceremonies are incredibly protracted and emotional. It's hard to believe that there's no emotional bond between males and females when you see them behaving in that way.